Let's now have a look at the song settings. These are very important to know about before you start creating music because if you get the wrong settings uh, before you start your project, it can cause some hassles down the track. You can access the song settings by clicking the little cog wheel on the top right hand corner of the screen and selecting song settings. Okay, this is where you access everything in the background such as the metronome and counting. Let's have a look at that one there. So the counting is the four little clicks that you hear uh, at the start when you hit the record button. And you also have an option to turn, so you can turn the, the counting on and off. You can have a visual counting. So let's have a look at what the visual counting looks like. When we record, it shows you that one, two, three, four. So that can be helpful sometimes if you're more of a visual person. Under this, uh, we can actually change the sound of that click. There's a click woodblock. You can go through some of these different sounds. And you can also change the volume of that metronome click if it's too loud or if you can't hear it. Oops, I'll just go back here. Okay, now this is where we can set the tempo. This is how fast our track is in beats per minute and you can manually select the tempo if you know how fast it is or if you're just going by a vibe and you think it's you know around about a certain amount you don't know much about bpm you can just tap it here one two three four one two three four so there we go that um guessed roughly that that was about 93 beats per minute that can be handy for people who aren't as musically literate or if you're just in a rush and you just want to quickly get the feel of it uh, using that setting. Um, now, if I go back, I select the time signature. Now, normally um, in standard sort of music production, especially at the level of music production that we're using for GarageBand, um, you generally don't really go outside of 4-4. This is standard Western music. This is pop music. However, if you want your song to have a 3-4 or a 6-8 feel, um, you can change that here. So instead of one, two, three, four, you will hear it as one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Or with six, eight, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six. So this can be handy if you want your song to have a different feel. There are a few examples of modern pop songs that are in three, three or six, eight. We can also change the key signature here. The key signature is important if you want to be able to transpose your song later down the line, and it tends to follow the key of the song. And this is for the use of auto-tune and things like that. This is a little bit more of an advanced feature, um, and we might cover this uh, you know, in particular in a later video when we're dealing with auto-tune and transposing. But if you know your song is in D minor, um, it's very handy to select this first. And the follow song key will affect things like auto-tune and transpose. Next, we have a look at the fade out. So you can have a fade out at the end of your song, if you like. Um, that's just a generic preset. Um, I haven't used that actually on the iOS yet, but I'm assuming this is a generic sort of preset fade out, a linear fade out at the end. Uh, the notepad, you can leave detailed notes about this particular session. If you're sharing it with somebody else, you can leave them, leave them some notes there. Jam Session uh, is a fantastic new feature where you can join with other creators nearby via uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and uh, you can actually jam all together in the same session. So if you have a friend over or a group of friends, all with iPhones, all with GarageBand, you can jam and create a song all together. Make sure you're all connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Okay, under advanced, we have multi-track recording. This will give you the ability to record two tracks at once or more, um, even when there's no audio device with multiple inputs detected. So if you had, um, say, a two input audio device um, that was you know, usable via a lightning cable and you can use that or you can record a guitar and a voice at the same time, um, then it will automatically detect that. If for some reason the automatic detection isn't working properly, you can switch on multi-track recording and manually select which tracks you want to record which instrument on. 24-bit audio resolution, I always use this because 
Being a big fan of high quality audio, I like to use the maximum quality that is available to me. When you use 24-bit recording, the files that you record will be roughly twice as big than if you have this deselected, it will use Redbook audio, which is 16-bit audio resolution, and the exported files will be larger, especially if it's an uncompressed audio format such as WAV um, or AAC. So just be wary that you will get larger file sizes, but you will get the maximum quality of audio available. Running background will mean that the garage band uh, will stay open in the background um, when you're running other apps. I tend not to have this selected because it saves automatically when you exit anyway. If you know you're going to be switching back to another app and then back to GarageBand quickly and a lot, you can have this. Now we have the uh, ability to select a Bluetooth MIDI device. So in the last few years, we've had some fantastic uh, Bluetooth MIDI devices available, which means you can get a, a keyboard totally externally with no wires attached and you can control the software instruments in GarageBand for your iOS device, which is fantastic. I don't have one nearby at this studio, so I'm not going to select anything there. But that's how you'd set it up. Make sure that your device is on discovery mode. We can also send the MIDI clock, which means that the iOS device will transmit its MIDI information, such as tempo and song keys and things, to external devices or apps that you're connected to. It will make GarageBand the master and the other devices the slave. So those are all the basic and advanced settings that we can look at before starting a project and we will see you in the next video.